We're ready. Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and call the City Council meeting for July 5th, 2011 to order. First thing on the agenda, as always, is the roll call and determination of the quorum. Charlene, if you would, please. Peterson. Here. Weifenbach. Here. Davis. Here. Hadcock. Kroger. Costello. Here. Wah. Here. Brown. Here. Mason. Here. We have quorum. Very good. Just a reminder, if you have a cell phone or a pager, please take that out, put it in the, uh, in the silent mode, or please turn it off. We'd certainly appreciate that. Also, if you were, wish to speak to any issue on the agenda or not on the agenda, there are speaker request forms like that. They're to your left or right. Please fill that out, turn it in to Charlene at the end, and that way, as they make their way down the agenda, they'll make sure that they do not overlook that. Next thing on the agenda, as always, is invocation. Uh, Pastor Doug Deal from the First United Methodist Church will give the invocation. Everyone, would you please rise and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to follow the invocation. Pastor. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Almighty and loving God, all good things come from you. You don't have to think very hard to know that our lives are filled with your blessings. Yesterday we gave thanks for the privilege of living in this great nation and for those who have given of their time, their wisdom, even their lives to maintain the foundation of these United States, as well as its protection and direction. Tonight we give thanks for our community in which we have the privilege to live. Whether we were born here or chose to, this place is our place. We're grateful for the many who live and work to guide, maintain, and protect what we enjoy here. This is a night of transition in our city government. For those who have served in these past months and years, we give thanks and wish for them your blessing as they continue to serve our neighborhoods and community in new and different ways. And for those who continue and for those who begin, we ask for wisdom, vision, endurance, and compassion. May what happens in this place in these days and months and years to come please you and bless us all, rich and poor, young and old, old timers and newcomers. In humility to you we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. And at this time, I would ask if Alderman Waugh and uh, Aaron Costello and Mr. Weifenbach would please come down and join me at the podium. That's what that. Well, tonight is the night of transition, and I would like to thank the three aldermen. Uh, no, we actually have five that are actually going out, but these three are actually here tonight, Bill Waugh, Aaron Costello, and Ron Weifenbach. I've had the true honor of serving with these gentlemen. They've done an outstanding job, and the thing I will tell you is the fact that there has never been a time since I've known them that they've never done anything other than put the city of Rapid City first. With that, I want to thank you for your service. I wish you well in the future. And I think that the community owes you a great debt for the service that you've been able to render during your term on the City Council. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please. Oh, we, we do have plaques for everyone. And Bill, would, you want to come out and say just a few words, if you would, please? I'm a little shorter than Mayor Hanks. <laughs> I, I, I didn't realize uh, me going off the council would bring out such a big crowd. So. <laughs> For whatever reason that might be. Um, I, would, I would like to uh, end my years of service um, on the Rap City Council thanking uh, Mayor Hanks for his dedication to the city and to my fellow council members that are leaving. Uh, I also want to uh, assure the uh, citizens of Ward 3 that I will continue to serve Rapid City in some form. Um, 
I also want to assure the citizens of Ward 3 and of Rapid City that the two ward members that uh, represent the ward that I live in are very competent and very dedicated and outstanding folks, Dave Davis and the soon-to-be Alderman Jerry Wright. So uh, I also want to take this time to thank the, the great city staff, the department heads and the employees that serve Rapid City and the citizens. What a great bunch of folks. Um, it's been, it's been a great time, six years on the council, and it's time for me to step aside and do other things. I also want to thank my family, who's supported me and put up with my late hours and coming in all different hours of the morning. And I want to thank the First United Methodist Church, where I work, to give me the support and the time off to uh, serve Rapid City. So thank you. God bless you all, and God bless Rapid City and the United States of America. Uh, you are taller than I am. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I wrote my thoughts down. Yeah, it is a rarity for me to speak at such length, so I appreciate you all lending an ear. Um, foremost, I need to thank my lovely and supportive wife, Rebecca. Without her support and understanding and counsel, none of these achievements would have been possible. And it's said that truly great people make you two feel that you can be great. And that describes Rebecca. And uh, I appreciate you all joining me in giving her a round of applause. You can stand up, honey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and, and next to all my friends that helped with my campaign, uh, their dedication uh, just allowed me to leverage time to such a tremendous capacity. And I'd also like to thank all the citizens of Ward 5 and of Rapid City for their support and their confidence. And uh, I hope that you feel I've served you well. And uh, next to the city staff who has been so cordial and so helpful and took the time to educate me and for being willing to listen to and consider different ideas. Uh, Lord knows I've had a few. Uh, and uh, finally, for all the council members I've served with and for Mayor Alan Hanks, all the support and the guidance and the mentorship that I received from you all throughout this process, through the easy decisions and through the difficult decisions, was essential and helped me grow so much as a person. And uh, when I first sat at this dais, I felt very young. And uh, I don't feel so young anymore. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've learned so much over the past few years and I look forward to applying what I've learned in order to benefit the city outside of a political realm. I also know that I have much more to learn in order to improve my abilities as a leader. And I look forward to learning those things outside of the realm of politics. And uh, many people have asked me if I plan on returning to politics. And God willing, I intend to. But first, I would like to fulfill my dreams of raising a family and put things in place so that I can devote more time and attention to serving the community. And uh, for now, this has all been wonderful, and uh, now I'm on my way. So. Way shorter than Aaron, but I appreciate it. And I, uh, Alderman Wall doesn't understand that you all came here to see me. <laughs> so I do want to hurt his feelings, but I appreciate the opportunity that I've had with the council. And I, I wanted to say a word for a couple of my colleagues that couldn't be here tonight for Alderman Hadcock and Alderman Kroger, who served this fine city well. They had, they, they had taken vacations with their family. They wanted to thank the citizens of Arapa City 
for allowing them to serve the community. And so with that being said, I'll, obviously there's a lot of people I'd like to thank. First of all, I'd like to thank God for being here. And uh, I'd like to thank the council people that I've, that I've served with. When I came on, I was, I was the only freshman uh, council person, so I had a lot of mentorship and a lot of opportunity to learn from people that have been there for quite some time, and I want to thank those people. I want to thank Mayor Hanks for serving um, and also working with me as I grew as a council person. I want to thank the citizens of Rapa City uh, that I've had many, many spirited debates with, uh, an opportunity for me to grow and for them to grow with the city. Uh, I, want to, I want to thank the new people that are coming on board. Uh, they're going to have uh, many challenges, as, as the council always does endure. Uh, there will be limited amount of experience here, but I think it's a, an opportunity for them. It's an opportunity for them to grow with the city and, and with the citizens of the community. So I look forward to uh, being available to them at some point to, to uh, bounce things off and those types of things. And um, I, I'm humbled, I guess, tonight, you know, to be here and see everyone here. And, and as we go through a transition, I think it's important that we all keep in mind um, why we're here and how this democratic process works and uh, how people serve the community. Uh, the community is a mutual arrangement for people who serve. I get as much out of it as, as the citizens of our community do. So uh, I want to thank everybody, uh, the staff that I've had an opportunity to work with have been very gracious and very wonderful to work with. Uh, I've been I mean, challenging them at times. Uh, they challenge me. Uh, Robert Ellis, who's not here today, I don't think he, I think he may be Moving on to uh, another city, I wanted to thank him. He's been inspirational to me, and he also uh, was a good resource for me as I uh, grew as a council person. And uh, with that being said, I, I look forward to uh, serving in some other capacities in the city. Uh, I've made some arrangements to do that, and so I'm not leaving Rapid City in any time soon. So thank you. It's now my pleasure to thank Mayor Ellen Hanks for all your dedication to this city. Uh, being mayor is a very challenging and uh, at times rewarding and at times thankless job. And uh, we thank you for your dedication. And um, without further ado, here. Thank you. Fun. Sit down. <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say to the citizens of Rapid City, it truly has been an honor and a pleasure of mine over the last four years to serve as your mayor. And it's also been an honor and a pleasure of mine to actually serve in many diff different capacities over the last 14 years. First, six years on the city council. I also served as a District 32 representative in the state legislature for those in Rapid City. And then, of course, the last four years as mayor. You know, over the last four years, City of Rapid City, we've faced some big challenges. We really have. The biggest, obviously, was really the worst recession since the Great Depression. And with the support of the City Council, of the staff, and really the community as a whole, Rapid City really survived this better than just about anywhere else in the country. Uh, you've probably heard me say this a million times. I'm going to say it one more time. City of Rapid City made it through the worst recession since the Great Depression without cutting services, without laying off employees, without dipping into reserves, and without raising your property taxes. That's something that I believe the community should be very, very proud of. It wasn't me. It was your city government, all of us. We came together. And when things got tough, quite honestly, we all pulled together. Um, the other things that I like to uh, reflect just very briefly on is the fact that although we went through the worst recession, we also grew this community over the last four years. A lot of great things have happened in the last four years in Rapid City, and a lot of things are continuing to happen. Everything from, if you think about it, four years ago, we did not have a Rushmore Crossing. We did not have an East Mall Drive. We didn't have a Cabela's. We didn't have a new Walmart going up. We didn't have a Main Street Square. We didn't have an ice arena. There's a lot of things that have happened over the last four years, and there again, it's because of a lot of hard work from staff and from your elected officials. 
Now, moving forward, I tell you, it was a long campaign. Everyone will attest to that. What I'm asking you to do is get behind the new administration, get behind the new mayor, get behind the new city alderman, because quite honestly, that's what this is all about. Elected officials are here to serve you, the citizens. The mayor, the city council, it's not the person, it's the position that's important. So with that, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Here, I thought I was going to be able to sneak out. <laughs> With that, the next thing on the agenda is a swearing-in of the new officials. Pauline, are we going to do Alderman first, or are we going to do the mayor first? Okay. Okay. We are going to take a short recess. We'll be coming back in. And then I'm going to ask Aaron Costello to actually be running the meeting while we swear in the new elected officials. Thank you, everyone. For the direction of our very wise city finance officer, I am to invite all of the newly elected officials to the dais, and I see you here. So now I'll turn it over to Pauline, if I may. Hi, Hi John Roberts. In the Constitution of the of the state of South Dakota. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That take this obligation freely, without any final reservations, or for the survey of the invasion. Faithfully and impartially, impartially, or for the duties of the office, office. or three, or Alderman Council, 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 City Council, Rapid City, South, South Dakota, Dakota, according to the law, law. and to the best of my ability. So, so help me God. God.
Yeah. We realized on the way over here. There you go, Jerry. Half price wine and Botticelli's. So. We're in. <laughs> I can see that spinning room. Read after me, please. I, Sam Quaker. Constitution of the Florida. And the Constitution of the State. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or for the purpose of evasion. Or for the purpose of evasion. That I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Mayor of Rapid City, South Dakota, of the according to the law and to the best of my ability, under my oath, so help me God. According to the law, this I swear. This I swear. This may be my last official act, Sam. I hope, I hope not. You worked hard. A lot of people depend on you. Thank you. Do good. I am so excited about the opportunity to serve the city as your mayor. And I look forward to representing everyone, regardless of whether you supported me in the campaign or not. I will be a mayor for the entire community. I've heard some people say recently, you know, we have a, a new city council over the last year. They might be new to the city council, but none of them are freshmen at life. 
and I look forward to working with every single one of them in moving our community forward. Thank you very much. I want to take a moment to thank my family, my wife Jennifer, the love of my life, and my best friend, my daughters, uh, Abby and Ellie, and the little one, Aubrey, probably wouldn't have made it through this tonight. She'll see, she's at home with Grandma. I want to thank my parents, John and Sherry Quaker, for being here from uh, Boyden, Iowa, and my sister Holly and Myron from Haywarden came all the way out for this, and I want to thank them for for their support as well. We will now take a 10 minute recess for some cake and, uh, and then we will convene in another 10, 15 minutes. Thank you.
All right, everyone, we will reconvene the meeting. Uh, next order of business is to adopt the agenda. So moved. We have a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. Do we have any changes or additions to the agenda? First, recognize our police chief, Steve Allender. Thank you, Mayor. I have an item to add. It's an event permit, and it is a um, from the Masonic Center for an event on July 8th. We will go ahead and add that as item uh, 51B. Any additional items? Recognize Alderman Gary Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to add, um, add an item concerning length of terms of office for mayor and council. Okay. Item 51C will be length of terms of office for mayor and council. Any additional items to add to the agenda? Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve the agenda with the additions noted? So moved. We have a motion and a second for approval of the agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Next order of business is to approve the minutes of June 20. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, next order of business is election of officers. And uh, the uh, Pauline, would you like to run through the process for us? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, we will need nominations from the dais. Once the nominations have ceased, we will hand out written ballots, and you will place your, excuse me, sorry, ballots are already at the dais. Um, once you receive those and fill those out, you do have to sign those so we know how you vote, but that is how we will vote. And then uh, City Attorney Green and I will tabulate the votes and he will report what that is. Okay. Do we have any nominations for the position of City Council President? I recognize Alderman Sasso. I'd like to nominate Charity Doyle for president. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for Charity Doyle for council president. Do we have any additional motions or nominations? We recognize Alderwoman Bonnie Peterson. Yes, I would like to nominate Dave Davis for president. Thank you. Okay. And do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to enter Dave Davis's name into nomination as well. Any further nominations? We'll recognize Charity Doyle. Thank you. Having observed the council for a couple of years and, and, and seeing the tremendous amount of contention that has existed, I am going to uh, respectfully decline that nomination for President Ron on the basis that I do not want my first day on the council to be contentious or step on anybody's toes. Um, I think it's the right thing to do, and, uh, but I am humbled and grateful for your nomination. Thank you. Would you like to withdraw your nomination? I'd like to withdraw my nomination. Okay. Thank you, Charity. Motion has with, uh, been withdrawn. Do we have a motion to cease nominations and cast unanimous ballot for Dave Davis? I'll make that motion. Okay. And then we'll recognize Jerry Wright. Alderman Wright. I'll second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second for nominations to cease and for Dave Davis to be our city council president. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next order of business is for the election of City Council Vice President. Do we have any nominations? We'll recognize Alderman Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to nominate uh, Bonnie Peterson, please. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. 
We have any additional nominations? Any additional nominations? We have a motion for nominations to cease. Cast it. You want to speak? Alderman Sasso. I would like to nominate Charity Doyle for vice president. I do not know if she would accept that. Um. Do we have a second on that nomination? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second for Charity Doyle to be nominated for city council vice president. Any additional nominations? Okay. okay let's proceed with the vote. The ballots have been signed by each council member and it will be entered into the minutes. Five votes for Bonnie Peterson, four for Charity Doyle. Congratulations. We'll recess for five minutes and five minutes only. I'll everyone right. change your seats. Thank you. The next order of business is uh, general public comment. This is a time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at the meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by unanimous vote of the council members present. Is there anyone that would like to speak on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, we will move on. 
The next order of business is public hearing items, items 1 through 52. And uh, we will, we have a motion to uh, uh, open public comment on items 1 through 40. We have a motion and a second to open public comment on items 1 through 40. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, We have a speaker request form on item number uh, 21 from Lisa Sissenstein, representing Convoy of Hope. <coughs> State your name for the record. Uh, Lisa Sissenstein, and um, I'm just here for Convoy of Hope. I met with Legal and Finance, and I'm just letting you know that I'm in the room in case there's any questions that do pop up. Thank you. Thank you. We have a speaker request form on item 22 from Mike Derby, representing Chapel Valley Emergency Management Commission. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Mike Derby, 2735 Country Club Drive, and uh, good to see the uh, council this evening. Thank you. Um, I just want to take this opportunity as a member of the committee to acknowledge Chairwoman Keck's uh, leadership for this committee. Uh, for and the committee for creating this document a lot of work went into this document and I'm hoping she'll speak this evening on it and um, I was in support of the final document and We had an opportunity to learn a lot from the National Weather Service uh, about NOAA radios uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration radios the met warn system uh, a lot of good things about fire mitigation from the fire department a lot of great things for Chapel Valley and I'm here to offer my support uh, as an owner of the uh, Cane Lake Resort and Chop House um, to offer my facility for future meetings for any organizational meetings in the parking lot for any um, emergency um, services that need to be parked somewhere so thank you Mr. Mayor and I was glad to be a part of that committee thank you We have a motion to close the public comment. We have a motion and a second to close the public comment for items 1 through 40. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Um, next order of business is uh, cons the consent items, items 1 through 38. Would anyone from the council uh, or staff like to pull any items 1 through 38? I recognize Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull items 28 and 31. I recognize Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to pull item 22. Okay. So far, we have items 22, 28, and 31. Hold for separate consideration. Any additional items? Seeing none, do we have a, a motion to approve the balance of the consent? We have a motion and a second to approve uh, items 1 through 8 with the exception of 22, 28, and 31. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number 22 is to acknowledge the report from uh, uh, Alderman Davis. Would you like to read item 22 into the agenda? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Acknowledge the report from the Ad Hoc Chapel Valley Emergency Management Task Force. The reason I wanted to pull that off was, as Mr. Derby has, I wanted to acknowledge the extreme amount of work that Jeanette Keck and the committee put into this task force. If you remember back some time ago, this council was presented a report, and a, a, the idea was uh, the possibility of another exit out of Chapel Valley. There was a considerable amount of opposition, but more importantly, the, the residents of Chapel Valley came forward and said, we can put together a plan that will be safe. We have a way that we can provide a safe residency for those 542, I think, 540 some homeowners, uh, residences in that, that area. Jeanette and a group of probably close to 20 people uh, 
gathered together, studied the issues. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to sit in on about half of those meetings. They truly studied what the issues of safety are, and they studied the long-term effect of what's going to happen if that plan isn't kept alive. And that's really the real issue here. And I think they've put together a plan that isn't just functioning, but it's sustainable. And I, I really want to applaud the, that committee and specifically Jeanette, and I couldn't let this go through on the consent item without bringing that up. So thank you for allowing me to, to pull that off for that purpose. Do we have a motion to acknowledge? We have a motion and a second to acknowledge item 22. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 28 is uh, Alderman Davis. Would you read 28? 28. Approve event permit from Cowboy Fast Draw of the Black Hills for Fast Draw contest at Cabela's on July 16th and 17th, 2011. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second for approval, and we'll recognize Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to pull this item just to uh, get a quick uh, understanding of what sort of safety measures will be taken at this. I, I do read here that these are uh, blank cartridges, but um, due to recent incidents um, that we've seen in the newspaper, I guess I'd, I'd like a little more... Uh, explanation of what sort of safety standards and precautions will be taken here. And I would turn to our Chief of Police, Mr. Allender. Well, Mr. Uh, Don Valle may be here tonight in the audience to explain this, but here's my understanding. First and foremost, these uh, firearms will not be fired at other people, as was the case in the Hill City a simulated shootout. Uh, secondly, uh, none of the shooters in this event are allowed to bring any ammunition to the uh, event. In fact, they're not even allowed to bring uh, dummy look-alike cartridges for their belt. They're all issued uh, blank ammunition at the site by the, uh, for lack of a better word, a range master. Um, so they're all shooting at targets with these blank cartridges. Uh, just to demonstrate the, the quickness of the this fast draw uh, similar contest or whatever. So um, um, way different than the Hill City event. Thank you, Ms. Downer Ellinger. I'll uh, leave it to the floor. We have a motion for approval. We'll recognize uh, Alderman Peterson. Thank you. I just want to let uh, Alderman Mason know and the other uh, Alderman too that when the gentleman came at Legal and Finance. We really quizzed him very closely about the safety um, safety aspects, and um, he sounded like they had triple and quadruple uh, backups or for their safety issues. And the big thing is they're not going to be shooting it at people, also. So thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item number 31, Alderman Davis. Item number 31, authorized mayor and finance officer to sign partial release of discharge. They yield to the floor. We recognize Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, I was pulling this for further clarification. As I read this, um, it looks like there is a release and discharge of a certain amount of land in the Minnesota Park subdivision, and I was hoping for some clarification on this matter. We'll recognize Pauline Sumption. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What this is for is there was an agreement many, many years ago with the developers of this property, and it's, I believe, along Fifth Street and possibly Catron as well. And as they plat the property and sell the property, they are required to pay us a linear foot assessment for prior improvements that were made to that property. Finance office gets together with the Public Works Department to determine the amount of that that assessment for that piece of property that's being sold. But part of that agreement is as, as it's being sold, we have to release the lien because liens have been placed on the property. Thank you for the clarification. Any further discussion on the motion? 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Well, we better we better have a motion. Somebody like to offer a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion and a second to approve. Item 31, I apologize. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Uh, next order of business is continued uh, consent items, items 39 and 40. Uh, either of these items need to be approved or, um, or removed? No, sir. Okay. Do we have a motion to continue these items until July 18? Move to continue. We have a motion and a second to continue items 39 and 40 to July 18. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. We're now at the end of continued consent items. We're on the non consent items, items 41 through 52. And we'll, uh, we have a motion to open public comment. We have a motion and a second to open public comment on items 41 through 52. Uh, we have one speaker request form, and that is on item uh, 47. We'll recognize uh, Tim Rose. Mr. Rose? Uh, I'm Tim Rose, and I'm wondering uh, how the special election is going to go, and what date it's going to be, and what requirements we have to do if done. Um, is it going to be just like uh, Mar like we did in March, just like a regular election, or is that? I'm um, just kind of curious. Thank you. For and then the another question. thing, um, I think you guys should uh, instead of having two-year terms, f you know, about four years or six-year terms, I so you guys can get um, more stuff done and then a longer uh, vision and stuff like that. So that's wanted to let you guys know. Welcome to the uh, council, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Pauline, would you like to um, talk briefly about the process? And Thank you, Mr. Actually, Mayor. Actually, I'm sorry. When we get to that item, we'll okay. do that. We'll do. Thank you. Recognize our city attorney, Jason Green. I don't think you voted to actually open the comment period, so I, I think at this point you should just ask for unanimous consent to deem the period to have been opened. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's okay with that? Yes. All right. All right. Uh, item number 41, Alderman Davis. Item number 41, the second reading of ordinance number 5725, clarifying the permissible fireworks in the city of Rapid City by amending section 8-24-020 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Yield to the floor. Do we have a motion? <coughs> we have a motion for approval. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Our city attorney, Jason Green. Jason? Thank you, Mayor. This, is, this ordinance is really a cleanup item. There is a reference in the ordinance as it exists today um, to a document that's published by a third party organization, and that reference significantly changes what could be viewed as permissible fireworks in the city. What this ordinance does is it puts everything back in very plain language to the rules that have always existed in Rapid City. Just the novelties are permissible. Thank you. Alderman Peterson? Any further discussion? The motion is on the floor for approval. Recognize Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in reading this ordinance, um, the novelties that I'm reading are just party poppers, snappers, sparklers, toy caps, and filter sparklers. Is that, uh, is that the only thing that would be allowed, uh, Mr. Green? That's correct. I, one of my things with consideration is uh, obviously an enforcement issue, and I guess I would turn to our uh, fire chief to see how we would actually enforce that, given that uh, looking at uh, the other day's events, um, it seems to be a citywide activity all over. And I guess I was just wondering how we plan to actually enforce uh, this rule. We'll recognize our fire chief, Mike Muldvern. Thank you, very good question. Uh, it's uh, basically on a call-by-call uh, -call basis. Um, typically on the 4th, starting about third, or second, third, fourth of July, as we receive complaints from neighbors or passerbys that people are shooting uh, fireworks off, 
either the fire department or the police department will go over there and investigate the complaint. And at that time, we determine if the fireworks are legal or not. If they're not, then we basically confiscate what fireworks are left and pursue it from there. Thank you. Any further discussion? The motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 42. Item number 42 is the first reading of Ordinance 5726, an ordinance amending Section 17-06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code, rezoning the within the described property as requested by Dream Design International. For a rezoning from general commercial district to a medium density residential district on property located east of the intersection of East Minnesota and Marlin Street, and the motion is to approve. We have a motion and a second for approval of first reading. I recognize Alderman Peterson. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess I need to ask the attorney, our, um, Mr. Lindbergh, but this is not linked, right, because it still has to go to the Planning Commission? That's is, correct. Is that why? Yes. So, um, and we do that to expedite the process? Is that why? That's correct. That's why that's done. Okay, thank you. The motion, the motion is for approval. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 43. Item number 43 is the first reading of Ordinance 5727, an ordinance amending Section 17-06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Rezoning within the described property as requested by Dream Design International for a rezoning of low density residential to district to medium density residential district for property commonly referred to as the intersection of East Minnesota and Marlin Drive. The recommendation is to the motion is to approve. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries item 44. First reading of Ordinance 5728 and an ordinance amending Section 17-06 of Chapter 17 of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Rezoning within the described property is requested by Dream Design International for a rezoning from low density residential to district to medium density residential district for property commonly referred to as the intersection of East Minnesota Street and Marlin Drive. The motion is to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve item 44. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 45. Item 45 is a request by Fisk Land Surveying and Consulting Engineers for James Steele for a preliminary plat for proposed lot one for property located along the south side of Sun Ridge Road west of the intersection of Sun Ridge Road and Aztec Drive. The motion is to approve with stipulations. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve with stipulations. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 46. Item 46 is a resolution, number 211-088, of support for the Hills Alive Music Festival in Memorial Park. I yield the floor. We have a motion or discussion? We have a motion or discussion? I don't have a motion. I'll uh, move to approve. Okay. You'd like to second that, Alderman Brown? Okay, we have a motion uh, by Peterson, second by Brown for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Item 47, Alderman Davis. Item 47 is a request to set a date for the special election for Ward 2 Alderman. The recommendation for that date is September 13th, 2011. I yield to the floor. Pauline. There it goes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The request is to set the date for September 13th. We are by law required to set it at least 60 days out. Once the publication uh, will go in the paper on Saturday for the vacancy, so then 60 days out plus six days ends up being the 13th of September. This will be much like the municipal election. The, anyone who is interested in running for this position has 30 days to circulate a petition, and so those will be available beginning July 15th. Okay. So first day that you can circulate a petition is July 15th. That is correct. 
I should also point out that we are working with the State Department, um, Secretary of State's office to come up with the, the rest of the election calendar. So that way we make sure that we get all the notices in the paper and we have all the deadlines ready for, for the notices. Thank you. Alderman Peterson. Oh. Um, Pauline, um, you probably just answered the question I had. So you don't know yet when they need to be turned back in, when the deadline is? It's supposed to be 30 days prior to the election, but that falls on a Sunday. So we need clarification if it falls back to the Friday before or the Monday after, which would be, I believe, like August 15th is the Monday after. Or, August, yeah, August 15th. Okay. Thank you. We do not have a motion on item 47. Someone would like to offer a motion? I move to set the date uh, for the award to Alderman election on September 13th. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion by Peterson, second by Nordstrom. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Bids. The first bid is for a six inch portable diesel trash pump for the water reclamation. Bids were opened on June 28, 2011. We did receive two bids for this. However, they did not meet bid specifications, so the recommendation is to reject all bids and we bid this item. And move to reject bid and rebid it. We have a motion and a second to reject uh, bids on item 48 and rebid. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 49. Item 49 is for the Canyon Lake Park Lighting Improvement Projects. The advertising authority was $110,000. The engineer's estimate $69,900. We received two bids on this, and the recommendation is to award the bid to Conrad's Big C Electric Inc. in the amount of $49,800.16. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 50. Item 50 is actually an informal quote for the CSAC second floor public works renovation project. We received three quotes on this, and the recommendation is to award phase one and phase two in the total amount of $33,449 to remodel King Construction. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 51, this is a report by John Seward, Executive Director of Main Street Square and introduction of Main Street Square Board of Directors. Mr. Seward. <clears throat> John Seward, Executive Director of the Main Street Square. And behind me, I have actually it's the Board of Advisors for the Main Street Square project. Um, we have a couple that couldn't attend this evening, but we have Patri Acevedo. 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 I got it wrong. Um, Mike Stanley, Josh Pretch, uh, Summer Kingsbury, Peter Schmidt, Don Montalo, uh, Molly Frankel, Josh Hoek, and Eric Hykus. Uh These folks have come on board to help us make Main Street Square a success. Um, as far as you know, budgeting, getting events going that are successful and uh, kind of represent the wants and needs of the community. Um, also, we have about 94, 95 events planned for 2012. We have about 30 uh, events planned for 2011. Um, our next big event, I guess we'd say, is the roller derby coming up on July 16th. If you didn't go to the first one, Please come to the second one. Um, there'll be a third one also on August 27th. Um, should be a really good event. We had about 800 people attend the last event, so it was, it was a really good success. Uh, it's between 5th and 6th Street on uh, Kansas City. And uh, our grand opening, please everyone attend. It'll be on November 26th, and it includes uh, reindeer sleigh rides. Uh, Santa Claus will be there coming in on the fire engine. Um, we have a children's present hunt, um, concert chorus. What else do we have, Megan? Uh, we also have a Santa run, which is somewhat similar to what they do in Boston. Uh, that will be in the morning. We'll follow that with a uh, pancake feed with the Lions Club. Uh, the Hope Center is also working on the uh, Santa run with us. Um, we have Rays of the Illusionist following the Festival of Lights. 
Um, and coordinating that with Carol Brown as well for the Festival of Lights. You could also skate with the Rush, Rushettes, and Nuggets. And I feel like I'm forgetting one more thing. You probably are. There's, there's Carol a lot going on. ice skating all day, but it'll be a, a jam packed day of lots mm -hmm. to do. So. Yeah. The ice skating rink will be open. We're looking forward to about November 11th, or November 10th, actually, on the 11th. Um, the School of Mines will be down reading off 6,000 names of uh, fallen war veterans. Uh, for 11, 11, 11. Um, so we're trying to get the ice skating rink installed before um, before that event occurs. So, any questions? We recognize Alderman Sasso. Can I get uh, some clarification on the Santa Run? <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, 7:45 in the morning, we're gonna start. Everybody that runs in the Santa Run will have is required to dress up like Santa. Um, I mean, if you want to dress up Santa and elves and you have a nice big group to go along, basically anything holiday themed, North Pole in particular. So, yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? Alderman Nordstrom. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, John. Good evening, Megan. I admire you folks for uh, all of your hard work that you've done on these projects. I've seen the, I call it an advanced look at the list of projects and activities that you are planning for the Main Street Square, and I applaud your efforts for doing that. Um, I, just a personal question, uh, if I may, is how is the BRIC program coming along? We currently have about 60 BRICs um, ordered, and I do have a small stack I need to get through yet tomorrow. Um, but we basically are selling about 50% of them are the large 8x8s and the other 50% are the 4x8s. So they're, they're definitely, um, we've seen a spike in them since we've had an appearance at the Summer Nights event every Thursday. Um, we did sell our first brick on site last week. So yeah, definitely um, things starting to work. So yeah. Great. Um, what I'm looking forward to is adding my name to the list of uh, purchasing a brick for, uh, and so I hope to get together with you folks uh, shortly. Sure. Stop Thank you. On down. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, John, and for your leadership. Thanks, Mayor. And all of you. Mm -hmm. We have a motion to acknowledge the report. Second. We have a motion and a second to acknowledge the report, item 51. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries. Item 51A, Summer Nights Traffic, Alderman Mason. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just want to take a bit of time to review the summer nights. Uh, I've really enjoyed the uh, vibrancy and energy that's uh, been going on downtown. Um, and uh, there's been some awesome activities that I've seen down there. <laughs> However, with that, I've also noticed some congestion on 5th and Omaha and some of the intersections uh, coming off of Mount Rushmore Road. And as uh, our tourist season is reaching a peak in traffic, specifically with the Sturgis Rally coming, where we can be anticipating thousands of bikes coming into the area, uh, I want to address what sort of uh, plans we have in place to address that sort of traffic load coming into the downtown area while having that current activity going on during Thursday nights. Uh, specifically, what I'm looking at is between the hours of 3 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm noticing that Main Street's being cut off and rush hour traffic's picking up. And with the addition of the motorcyclists and tourists in the next following month, um, I, I guess I'd like to see what sort of plans and ways we have of dealing with that. And uh, I guess I would look to our public works director, Dale Tech, to see if there is anything in place. Dale Tech. Thank you, Mayor. The current traffic control plan that's in place um, has uh, been in operation, I believe, for the four nights. Uh, there has been some congestion. Uh, the police department has been manning the intersections and manually operating the signals to improve that flow of traffic. My understanding that between the hours of 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., there, there has been heavy loads at uh, intersections downtown. Um, I think the key is to actually having a person at each intersection manning the signals, improving the flow of, of traffic through there. I'm not sure that there's a lot more that can be done to improve that flow of traffic. Um, I, I don't know that we've got any other suggestions to, to make improvements to the existing traffic control plan. Appreciate that. 
My fundamental concern here is uh, I enjoy having a good time like everyone else, but I enjoy having a safe time for everyone involved, uh, a safe environment to do that in uh, while having a good time downtown. And I guess I, I am concerned about the safety. Um, the traffic congestion is something that uh, I, I would like to discuss, and as we move forward, uh, look at ways of mitigating that as the Sturgis rally comes closer and closer upon us. Um, and I would uh, yield the floor to my colleagues for further discussion on the topic. Thank you, Alderman Mason. We'll recognize uh, Alderman Peterson. Hey, thank you. Um, when is uh, Summer Nights coming back for their, uh, you know, we gave them a six week trial? Is that, are they scheduled already or? Or does anyone know? Recognize our Chief of Police, Steve Allender. Thank you, Mayor. I believe the request is coming through on the next legal finance, uh, so the second council meeting this month. Okay. Okay. Um, of course, safety is always first, and I'm hoping that uh, they will bring forth more information, too, about how it's affecting the um, businesses along that along that route um, for us to take a look at that and I think that'd be also a good time to try to figure out what to do uh, during the rally but it seems like also last year rally traffic was down in Rapid City so I don't know if we can find some information about that or not so we have it all when it comes up again thank you any further discussion or motion we have a motion to acknowledge. Okay, we have a motion and a second to acknowledge. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 51B, this is a, a permit uh, for Kansas City Street for the Masonic Lodge. And Chief Allender, if you could present this item. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this event application is um, from the uh, Masonic Center uh, where they have the Supreme Queen annual visit on Friday July 8th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and what they're requesting is free parking in the 600 block of Kansas City Street um, for those hours. They're not requesting any uh, places being blocked off uh, just um, no fees for parking. Steve, can you provide a brief history of what we've done situations like this in the past? Yes, the only, <clears throat> we've had a few of these in the past and the most recent one that I can think of was an event at the Dahl where uh, Rapid City Regional uh, Hospital was having a training event down there and there was quite a bit of discussion uh, from the council at that time and the decision was made to deny the request because of the parking alternatives that are available. Uh, that's my recollection anyway. Okay. Recognize Alderman Davis. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question of, of Chief Allender. Steve, how, how do you administer the free parking? I mean, is there a, a coupon type thing or is it a refund after we ticket how, how are we handling that how do how do we know those that are there attending that event versus some other citizen that happens to be there that's a great question um, and in reality i think what we have done before there's been limited number of these that have for small spaces in the past and um it's just a matter of us uh, ignoring enforcement on that whole block. So there's no differentiation between who's attending the event or who's looking for a free parking spot. Did that answer the question? Yeah. One moment and we'll go to uh, Gary Brown. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I was going to do, uh, ask for some leniency if you I, I know this lady wanted to speak to this issue and kind of explain it would you allow her to uh, come up all right thank you please come forward
testing this. And why were, uh, let me explain it just a little bit. The Daughters of the Nile is the counterpart of the Shriners, and that's just so you know who that is. And the Queen is like their president. I'm part of the West River. We have 160 ladies. This is the Queen that's coming. We're really only looking from one to four. Our Queen is coming in from Tampa. I'm having five, maybe six Queens come from the United, all over the United States. They're all driving in. Our ceremony lasts three hours. There's no way that we can leave the ceremony and run and drive our car around or put money in. It's hard for us, we're all in gowns and crowns, to park like on the parking thing. So it's a kind of a special request and I understand that we're, uh, because it is people from outside. It's not the locals and it's a one-time event. Uh, it'd be kind of embarrassing to me and to everybody else if all my queens and supreme queens and all these people come in and get tickets. And I don't know what, how else to handle it, to be honest with you. We would be happy to try to do something else, but we just don't have an alternative. And we cannot leave. It really would be just from one to four, and we would like to have either some, however the police would decide to do that, but it would really help us out because I really hate to have to pay out of my own pocket for these ladies because I don't want them to get tickets. And that's kind of why we're requesting. I understand you usually don't do it. To me, it's a very special event. We would never be coming back again until maybe next year, and it's unusual she would come on Friday. Usually we're okay. They come on Saturday. It's a very special event for us, and I ask you to just please maybe consider it because we do know it's an unusual thing to have happen, but it's, it's something that we can't, I can't prevent, and I've got all these ladies coming, and I don't know what to do with them. I really don't. I don't know where to park them. Trust me. And I don't want to get tickets either, and I don't want the queens from Minneapolis and all my queens coming in to come out and find tickets on their car. So that's just to clarify it, and I'm, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. We'll recognize Alderwoman Peterson. Thank you. Is there, um, Chief Allender, do you know if, how many parking places we're talking about that, that she's requesting or, or Dale? I don't, I don't know. Several. Um, well, my, my thought is I was just wondering if it would be a possibility of just kind of figuring out how much those parking places would be predicted to pull in if that, if that kind of data is available or, you know, charge them. And, and I don't know if this would work with your group, but to kind of put a, pay the city for so much parking ahead of time and then the police ignore that area. I don't know if that's appropriate, but it just seems like it, it could be a solution to the uh, problem because it is a hardship because they're for people to go out and move their car in the middle of a Queen of the Nile ceremony, I'm sure. Thank you. We'll recognize Alderman Wright. Cynthia, did you say there were six queens? Or? Well, I've got, excuse me, you can't hear me sitting down. I've got 20 that will be coming from out of, out of state, including queens, supreme queens and all that. And I've got probably about 22 of my own people. Whether they're going to be all in different cars, I really don't know at this point. What we were hoping was to get the passes and use as many as we could. And, you know, because the two-hour parking is free. It's just that I can't run out there and and move my car. I mean, that's, that's the issue. If, if you came up with something, we don't mind paying. We don't pay, main, mind paying for the meters. They're right in front. We just, I can't leave my crown on and all that to go out and put money in the meters. We're not trying to cheat the city. We're truly not. We're trying to bring, and I'm bringing all these people in. We're going to be eating lunches and doing a lot of stuff. It's not a huge event. You know, we want to be fair to you guys. We're not asking for a free ride at all. We're just asking for some way that you can help us so we don't have tickets and <laughs> all these ladies sticks. It's about what we were envisioning was 20 to 30 passes, but if you don't, we want us to park there and just not have the meter, meter made, meter made, meter, meter made, give us tickets because we're long, they're longer than two hours, our meters expire. Anything that you could work out with us is just fine. It's just I don't want to have to pay out of my pocket for 30 cars at $5 a piece. And, I, and it's a bad thing. I don't want my queens to see tickets on their cars and make us seem inhospitable when I have asked them to drive and come and see the ceremony. So we'll do whatever the, whatever the council comes up with is just fine with us. You know, we'll, whatever the 
police department wants to do. We're just asking for some reasonable way to work around this, and that's all we're asking. <coughs> Not a free ride. I mean, we, we understand that. Any other questions? As I try to stand down low. We'll recognize Alderman Sasso. And this is connected Alderman with the Shriners, so it is a nonprofit organization. Yes, sir. We are we are a separate organization, but we are nonprofit. Yes, sir. We absolutely are. All of our, my money and everything I raise goes to the Shrine Hospital. We are just connected to them, just as the Eastern Stars to the Masons. I just know you're not really familiar with this, but no, we're a nonprofit, and all the, all the money that I bring in and would have to pay out on this one, I'll go to the Shrine Hospital. Yes, sir. That's our activity. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Wright, I apologize for cutting them off. So, it's no problem, sir. Uh, if we were to lease, I mean, we used to do construction, parking, and that kind of stuff. Can we, like, lease out 20 spots in front of the Masonic Hall, barricade it, and charge you, like, what is it, two bucks per spot, whatever it would be, and, and put barricades up to protect it for you or something? Let's go to our city attorney, Jason Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We've uh, addressed uh, similar issues um, many times in the past, and it's not a permissible use of the public right away to lease it to an individual person. If the council is interested in granting this request, my recommendation is simply direct the police department not to enforce during the times that they've identified. That doesn't uh, run afoul of, of any obligation that the city has. Well, I'll go right on the limb first meeting I'm in here, but I'd suggest that we uh, do just that with a firm understanding between the Masonic Lodge and our police department, specifically who, when, what, and times, and do it. If okay. that's close enough to a motion, I stand by that. It is. No we have a motion and we have a second. Everyone understands the motion. Jason? Just for clarification. Yes, sir. Motion is to direct the police department for ref to refrain from enforcing the parking ordinance during the hours requested as presented by the chief of police. Yes, and as coordinated with Masonic Lodge as to how many and who and where, and it's limited, yes. Okay. Everyone understands the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Call me, not the Masonic Lodge. Call me, you've got my number, and we will work it out, okay? Don't call the Lodge because they won't know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Item 51C, length of terms for mayor and city council members. And we'll recognize Alderman Gary Brown. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to inform the, the council that I plan to put on the next legal and finance committee agenda a discussion of the length of term for the mayor and the council for extending that term and I will be suggesting doing it by ordinance and uh, it's time we bring this thing back I know it's been up at least twice uh, at the previous councils and that but I want to start the process working through the legal and finance I think it's an issue we as elected leaders we need to take on and get settled so uh, I will be bringing that forward on an agenda item on legal and finance thank you mayor and we'll recognize Alderwoman Bonnie Peterson. Bonnie. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Brown, for uh, letting us know your intentions. And I would, um, I think it's in the best interest of the city for the council and the mayor to serve longer ter terms because there's a strong learning curve. It takes almost a year to really kind of know what's going on. And by then, it's another year and you're running for reelection again. Um, one thing I'm challenged about with this is somehow staggering elections so that we don't have this situation again where we have um, the senior people on the council being um, uh, one year senior. <laughs> and I know the mayor has a lot of seniority for being on the council and that's great, but we could be in a situation where he could also be a new person. and would not have that uh, that capability so thank you okay. any further discussion we'll move on to item number I'm sorry Richie Horstrom Richie thank you mayor, thank you, mayor. Um, I, I want to 
strongly support Alderman Brown's uh, suggestion for an ordinance on this. Uh, I've been looking at the responsibilities as the new person coming into uh, the city council. The first of all, what I see is that the new council has roughly 60 days to get their arms around the first budget. And um, that's a concern for me as a, as, a, uh, as a council member now to understand a $50, $50 million budget. Uh, so I, uh, I want to have that discussion as well. And then having the opportunity to take a look at the second year uh, of a uh, alderman's term to have the opportunity to look at uh, at the, the second budget that the, the new council members will be addressing because essentially we've got six months to look at that, that budget uh, for the second year and then the potential of having five new council members coming on board again. So I applaud your efforts for uh, taking a look at that. And, and the other factor that I'd be, like to uh, take a look at is when this would be implemented. Thank you. I yield the floor. And we'll recognize uh, Alderman Sasso. Ron? Uh, actually, a question for you, Gary. Do you, um, do you have an idea of what you're looking for? Are you looking at four-year term for mayor and three for council or, or something uh, other than that? Mayor? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Alderman Sasso. Yes, about four years ago, uh, a group of us called the Senior Council from the Chamber, it's all the past chairman of the Chamber, had been discussing city government, how, what we thought uh, maybe it should look like and that, uh, should it be home rule, should it be city manager, whatever. We came down to the conclusion to start first with length of terms. And what I will be discussing, proposing, is four years for mayor, three years for, for city council as a starting point. And how we stagger that, how we work, work it in, be working with, uh, discuss with the city attorney's office, with the mayor, and see how we want to approach that. Wide open, I'm not in concrete anything, if the terms should be different or whatever. I just want to get the discussion started and let's get to a conclusion on this. Two years is not working. Did I come close, Ms. Alderman Sass? Thank you. Yes. Um, also, uh, if, I, if I may, uh, finance manager, uh, how much does it cost the city approximately to run an election? And I know I'm kind of throwing you on the spot, but a ballpark figure, if, if you can. Pauline. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A typical city election with all five wards and or mayor election involved typically runs anywhere from thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. And then, like in the case of this year's election, we have a runoff that will, again, um, because it was a citywide runoff, will cost us probably close to thirty thirty-five thousand dollars. And if it's just for, like, say, for instance, ward two or approximately. The last time we did just one ward, I believe, was when we had a special election when um, Mr. Costello got on, and I believe that was quite what, around twenty thousand dollars for that. Okay. Um, one last, I guess, uh, just a, a suggestion. Thank you very much. If at all possible, I don't know what uh, committee assignments will be, but uh, if there's a way that as we move forward looking at this, the possibility of even if it's every four years we're eliminating one city election, potentially saving the city, you know, twenty thousand dollars might be uh, worthwhile. So thank you very much. And we'll recognize Alderman Peterson. Bonnie? Yes. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, that the bottom line will be though that none of the city, when we vote on this, that none of the current uh, people that are serving will benefit from or suffer from <laughs> the longer term that, you know, that has to be, a, um, you know, so that our motives are above board because I believe our, all our motives are above board for what's best for Rapid City. Thank you. Okay, any further dis uh, discussion? Do we have a motion to acknowledge the discussion? 
We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Item 52, Vision 2012 update. Do we have an update tonight? Dale Tech. Thank you, Mayor. Item 52 linked to your agenda is the spreadsheet. Uh, there's only three updates on it, and they're all for the Phase 4 2012 funding. Uh, the first item is the Adult Resource Center Feasibility Study. That reflects uh, $33,625 committed uh, by a... Um, uh, it was approved by City Council on May 2nd for the Phase 4 funding. And then also a change order for the Main Street Square for $43,177 as approved earlier on the agenda is reflected there. As you can see, the uh, balance, uh, contingency balance is $363,898 for the Main Street Square project. And then the final update is the YFS kitchen renovation uh, funding commitment of $575,000 uh, in the year 2012. Actually, 2011, rather. It was moved from 2012 by action of the City Council on June 7th. I'd stand by for any questions. Recognize Alderman Peterson. Bonnie? I'm just chatty Cathy tonight. Um, I would like to clarify on this Main Street Square that does this, bal this balance here, does that reflect the donated money or this is just the 2012 money? That is just the 2012 money. The city's commitment for the project was $3.5 to date with the bid that was awarded uh, as well as the change <coughs> orders to date, there's been $3.1 million uh, allocated to the project. Therefore, there's three, $360,000 worth of city 2012 funds remaining. The uh, approximately $1 million in donations is being used uh, to purchase equipment in kind to install in the project. And that's a separate. Okay, I might. Funding. It seemed like at legal and finance last week we talked about that part of that money that we okay to spend was coming from um, donated money that we'd be going into that donated money. And Pauline, I think you and I might have had the conversation, so I don't. I don't know if I misunderstood or. Pauline. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We did receive $1 million as a cash donation that is in license and trust to go towards this project as well. Public Works tracks just the 2012 portion of that, so we still have that $1 million available. In addition to that, there are some pr equipment purchases, as um, Mr. Tech alluded to, that they will be doing on their own to, as far as uh, additional matching funds. They will be purchasing some of that in addition to that $1 million donation. Okay, so my understanding from legal and finance was, though, that we had already started going into that $1 million donated money, or no, we, or have we not? That was my understanding, or what I thought I understood. So, but, so what you're telling me tonight, though, is that we still have $363,000 from the 2012 funds left to be... That's my understanding, yes. Okay. I know you weren't here on legal and finance when the discussion took place. So, okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Do we have a motion? Okay. Second. We have a motion uh, by Davis, second by Peterson to acknowledge item 52. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, now is the time for public hearing items, uh, items 53 to 57. Do we have a motion to open uh, the public hearing for item items 53 to fi through 57? We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. We do not have any speaker request forms for 53 through 57. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? Okay. Um, okay. Items uh, 53 through 55 are continued uh, consent items. Any of these items need to be pulled from the council? 
No, sir. From the agenda for separate consideration. Okay. Uh, and Jason, what do I do here? Do I Okay, I don't need to close the hearing first. Okay. Do we have a motion to continue? Okay. We have a motion to continue items 53 through 55. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries. Okay, we have a motion to close the public hearing. We have a motion and a second. We'll take one of those as a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed motion carries. Um, Items, uh, item 56 and 57, these are consent public hearing items. Either of these items need to be pulled by council members. Seeing none, do we have a motion to approve items 56 and 57? So moved. Motion and second to approve items 56 and 57, the alcohol licenses. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Bill list. Pauline. The total bill list before you tonight is in the total amount of seven million three hundred one thousand dollars three hundred one thousand two hundred eight dollars and seventy eight cents. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. We have a motion and a second for approval of the bill list. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. We do not have a need for an executive session tonight. Correct, Jason? Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.